All right, today we are talking about the Canon M50 and how to set it up for the most overused term on all of YouTube, filmmaking. I kid, I kid, I kid. It's just, some people are going so far into the weeds about the minor, minor details of things for filmmaking and forgetting that filmmaking is just about like, go make movies. And something like the M50 is great for making movies. And yes, it may not have every single feature that a GH5, GH5S, a 1DX Mark II, some of those wild, crazy cameras that everybody talks about has. But at the end of the day, you can make some great stuff with this. And so we're gonna talk about some of the setup that I've done that makes it easier for me to capture better quality films as well as making it quicker to do that, because speed is important so that you can get lots of reps in and create lots of movies and hone your own skills, which is really the most important thing. So, I think the first thing that I change is actually the picture profile. I found the like default auto picture profile on this to be not, not good. Like, I just really, really didn't enjoy it, and so what I actually did was just set up a simple kind of custom profile where I basically am able to go into a neutral profile I leave the sharpening up in kind of the middle. I think I'm like four out of seven because I feel like the sharpening's good and I don't have to sharpen afterwards. If you want to sharpen afterwards, you can dial that down. But then I just take my contrast all the way down, take my saturation all the way down, and color tone, I actually have moved a little bit more to yellow skin tones because my face is naturally very, a little bit more tomato-y. And so I can set it up for how I feel like skin tones for me or other people, just the way that I like to color, is set. And so what's really handy about that is now you've got a lot more dynamic range to play with, which again is, it's gonna keep your highlights a little bit darker and your shadows a little bit brighter. And that's just handy because you can always add more contrast later, which I always do. But in some specific scenes, you might be going, shoot, my highlights were really, really bright. Well, they're not so bad now. Or my shadows were really, really dark, not so bad now. And so it's not a Canon log. It's not a raw format, but it's going to give you a lot more latitude in how you color it afterwards. So. You can set that up how you want, but for me, that was like first thing I did. Color profile lets me color it more how I want, which I think that's a big part of the style of filmmaking. Other things around settings. Well, let me tell you, first of all, one of the best things you can do on this camera is create your own custom menu to get the settings that matter the most to you in one menu so you can get at them really, really quickly. Now, I'll talk a little bit more about how you can customize the buttons on here so you get a bunch of settings there. But for me in my quick menu, here's what I have, the settings that really matter to me. IS settings. Now, this matters in a lot of different ways, but this camera has built-in digital IS that you can turn on or off. Now, I will say this, if you have a lens like the 11 to 22 or the kit lens that has built-in IS, you don't really need this unless you're wanting incredibly like locked off stable shots, then, then maybe, but for kind of everyday use, use the IS that's in here. But if you have something like this 18 to 35 millimeter or the 22 millimeter F2, having the digital IS, it's gonna crop in a little bit more so you lose some width, but now you're getting a chunk smoother shots. Now, if you're trying to go ultra wide, like this 11 to 22 millimeter, because of the crop factor in this lens, you're already not like super wide, you're, you're pretty wide, but if you're gonna add on that stabilization, it's gonna crop in even a little bit more. So, so leave it off. But there are two digital IS modes and you need to understand the difference. There's, there's like the standard, the, the regular version, and that crops in a little bit and kind of smooths things out, but still allows you to have some motion where if you wanna you know, move to the side or move up and down, 
it's still gonna be relatively smooth. Now the job of IS is to keep things like straight and you know smooth. So you know as you start moving around, sometimes it can be a little bit jittery, but there's another mode it's enhanced. And in the enhanced mode, it's basically like a tripod mode. What it's trying to do is whatever you're focused on, keep it absolutely in the middle. And so it crops in even more, but it can be really handy if you're driving in a car and it's a little bit bouncy and you're moving around, it'll keep things like fairly well locked off. And then you have the ability to, if you're zoomed in a long ways, you know, and hand holding that it will keep it pretty stable, but don't try and move. Don't try and pan with enhanced on. It doesn't like that at all. And that looks terrible, but it's, it's nice for those specific situations. Now, some people may talk about the video quality of, as you're cropping in on that digital IS. For me, I found like, it still looks really good. And I haven't done like a side-by-side -side comparison. Maybe I should to see with digital IS on or digital IS off. But for me, having a non-shaky shot is more important than the tiny bit of detail you might notice in that slight bit of cropping in. Okay, so that's just, that's, that's just me. What else do I have in here? Move your record quality. I personally shoot in 24 frames per second because I like the way that, that looks and kind of being a little bit more film-like, you might be at 30 frames per second. But if you want to shoot slow motion at 60, it's easy to switch here right into that. You also do have 4K in this camera. Now, again, the two caveats, you don't get the good autofocus and you get a lot more of a crop factor. It's a lot more zoomed in, but this can actually play to your advantage. You know, flip it in manual focus, you're in control of the focus. And then now you're actually taking this would be a 35 millimeter lens with the 1.6 crop factor. You know, it'd probably be like a 55 millimeter lens, something like that. Well, in 4K, now you're going up even more crop factor. This is probably like a 70 or a 75 millimeter lens. My math could be off, but you're zoomed in a lot more. Plus you're now shooting in 4K, so you could then crop in almost like, you could crop in two times. You could probably get to like 150 millimeter equivalent at full 1080p quality. You can still have the digital IS on, you know, to try and smooth things out, but that gives you a lot of flexibility in taking a wider lens and allowing you to zoom a lot more with it. And who doesn't like that? I think that's that's kind of neat. The other benefit you get of having 4K in this is that you've got 4K time lapses built right in. And that's a powerful video making tool where you don't have to take a thousand photos. You don't have to record 4K for 20 minutes you know, and fill up your memory card for that. You can just shoot 4K in this and then you can punch in, you can pan, you can do all sorts of things with the with the 4K time lapses. So that's nice. Being able to use the viewfinder is handy when it's really, really sunny out. Uh, the only thing is if you leave it auto between switching between the screen and this, I find my mic cable always hits a sensor and that's turning this off and I'm having to adjust it and move it. So I've put that in the menu where I basically leave I want the screen on all the time, except I can pop in here and put in the viewfinder if it's really, really bright or there's something where I need to check the like finer details, but I've got that in there. And then finally, you can have manual focus peaking in this camera, which is actually a nice feature for an entry level camera that it will outline the things that are in focus and show you that on the screen in red, blue, or yellow, you get to decide, but especially nice when you've got something like this, you know, it's shooting at 1.8, something really shallow, your manual focusing, maybe you're in 4K for picking up those settings, you can have the, the peaking on. No zebras though, for those of you that, you know, want zebras. And so those are the main features that I have in my menu because the other thing you can do, and shout out to Caleb from, I think, hybrid DSLR shooter, DSLR hybrid, anyway, you guys know who he is for putting me onto this, but that all these buttons are customizable. And that's really handy because this camera doesn't have a lot of switches and dials and buttons. And so you wanna make sure the buttons you need are here. And for making videos, you don't need the flash button. You don't need the trash icon button. That's actually maybe you really don't wanna have that. You can change those. So I've got, you know, autofocus, manual focus here, but I've put on the other side, the different autofocus modes. So I can switch between face tracking to a single point tracking and be able to adjust that. So I can use a great autofocus, but to actually focus on what I want to focus on quickly. It's just, you know, it's a press away. And I love this one from Caleb. I changed the trash icon like he did to put the camera to sleep. So, you know, I leave my screen on, I want it on whenever I'm ready, but when I don't need it, because the battery in this isn't huge, you just hit the trash icon and the camera goes to sleep. Perfect. And then you just like, press your shutter half the way or hit another button or, you know, and it's back. So customize those buttons to be what you need. I've got white balance up here so I can quickly change between auto white balance, locking in my white balance, which is important for a lot of different shots and be able to do that. As well as you've got the, you know, the quick menu, hit the quick menu and you get access to pretty much everything as well. Something a lot of people want to know is can you get the audio meters on a screen that you can see? No which is super unfortunate. You can even customize the exact stuff that's on your screen and, and change lots of those things, but you can't get the audio meters on there, which is quite unfortunate, but 
if you didn't know this, if you switch the info screen all the way over to the one where it's got all the information, then you get the audio meters. You can't leave it on all the time, which is so frustrating, but at least you can get them there. So that's something. Um, you know, another note too for your audio level settings is you can manually set those to make sure that it's not getting too loud and wrecking your audio. And for me, those are those are the things that matter to me. There, I'm sure there's some other settings. You guys could leave them in the comments where you're like, oh, this setting's really important or you forgot to talk about this setting or that setting, you know, let me know. But with this kind of setup, I've actually been really, really happy with this camera of the abilities that it has and the quality of footage that's coming out of it. Fantastic, and soon I'm gonna try and make like a, a proper quality film to, to show it off, but for shooting the B-roll in our vlogs, especially on Justin and Greg, fan friggin' tastic I'm Justin Rivas, uh, thanks for watching, you know, the, the like, comment, subscribe thing, whatever it says. Cool? Cool.